All right. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to get this going here. Get my uh, tablet awake and looking. Actually, hold on. I just forgot to close the doors to my room, so give me a second. I'm going to be back. All right. Like most people, uh, my family's home. I'm working from home, and so I kind of locked myself in my room to do these, and I forgot to do that before we got started here today. So there's probably nobody watching yet anyway. Oh, but there we go. One person on there watching. I also forget that it takes a few seconds longer to get started on the YouTube live than it does on the Facebook live. So sorry for being just a couple minutes late there while I got that all sorted out. I'm uh, getting better at it. All right. Hello, Heather. That's a name I'll remember from Johnston. Johnston. Hi, Robin. Hi, Birdie from Florida. Oh, that sounds lovely right now. We are getting sunshine and blue skies and getting ready here for our first, uh, I think I heard over the weekend that uh, we might be hitting 80 degrees, which is pretty exciting for those of us here in Washington State. Hello, Lana, Patricia. Hello, Teresa. And hello, Leah. I see you popping on there as well. Get myself organized here. Um, uh, I keep thinking of things I need to get out and ready to go. So, pardon me. I'm going to try and speak up well enough so everyone can hear. I know some people have trouble with the sound here on YouTube. So, just make sure your sound settings are up on your computer and also on the YouTube. Um, I don't know if that'll help make a little bit of a difference as well on there. So hopefully so that everyone can hear okay. But um, I'll do my best to talk as loud as I can. Hello from Minnesota to Sharon. Uh, hello from Tennessee to Judy. And let's see, Barbara, Ontario. Uh, hello, Nat Natalie. One of our scrapbook design team members there. Olive French, Mississippi. Hi, De Deba? Deba? I wanted to say Deborah, but then I looked and realized there's no R in there. Hello, Dana from Oregon. All right, we got a few people on here. So, so Judy, you can't hear too. Um, so I think it's just everyone's different computer and YouTube settings. So just make sure the volume on YouTube is turned up. Uh, the volume on your device is turned up. Sometimes... Um, earbuds are helping people out. Um, I don't know if that'll make a difference, but I'm doing my best to speak up. I've got my volume on my phone up. So um, I don't know if you can watch on rewatch and turn it up that way. So glad you can hear good Lana at least. So, all right. So we are going to use part of the new release today to make this fun sparkly card. Um, and I have to confess, this was the first time I have ever tried heat embossing on acetate. And I have no idea why I waited so long. It was one of those things that was just intimidating. And so I was talking to uh, Kennery and Leah and we were kind of planning out this card for today. And um, Kennery said something about it. And I was like, oh, I haven't done that before. It just scares me. I have, um, let me show you the acetate I'm using. I have some heat resistant acetate, but I've only used it for normal shakers. I've never heat embossed on it. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did it today because my first try went perfectly. So I would assume if I just do the same thing again, it will again. So I will show you it's not near as scary as I thought it was going to be. So this is a shaker card. We stamped the rainbow on the acetate. We're doing a little bit of water coloring, liquid water colors, using the beautiful new Keep Going stamp and die set from the new release. Um, hi, Lori. You popping on there. And then um, I used crystals in my shaker. Um, if I have, I'm going to, I actually might have enough. I had to order some more foam tape. I'm looking at my tape and going, well, I might have enough. Um, if I do, we'll fill it with crystals this time. If not, we'll do uh, jewels because I've been going through my foam adhesive like crazy. So I had to pop on and order some more of that. So I would have enough. So we'll see. Um, what did I say? I used jewels. Ah, I get those two mixed up, I think, every week. It's my own little dyslexic thing. I used jewels, but if I have enough foam adhesive, we'll use crystals instead. Let me show you. Um, obviously, either one will work just fine. Here is the crystals, not the jewels. And these have a little more of a 3D um, kind of a diamond effect on them. Really pretty and sparkly for shakers. Um, they're a little thicker, 
So I need two layers of foam adhesive if I'm going to do that. So if I have enough, I will go ahead and do that with as we start putting it together. If not, the backup plan will just be to use the jewels instead. The jewels are flat backed, so they're a little thinner. Um, so they are great for on the front of the card like here. Um, but they also, I use the crystals all the time on the card fronts as well. So, um, so we'll go ahead and turn the camera around. We've got a few people on here watching. We're going to start off with the watercolor so that that has a little bit of a chance to dry. And then we can kind of assemble the shaker and then the flower goes on right at the end. Um, because there's a lot of steps on this, I have a little bit I've done in advance. Um, so I don't have to do any die cutting um, or heat embossing. Well, just heat embossing on the acetate. But I have the flower embossed in advance to save a little bit of time today. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around here. And we'll start with our watercoloring. Ooh, all my stuff. Hello, Evelyn from Florida. Hello, Amy. Glad you could join us. Let's turn it around here we go. Okay. And move some stuff here so that I can slide this over and have this fairly even. All right. Hi, Allison from Colorado and Suzanne from Arizona. Seeing everybody popping on here. Okay, I'm going to just kind of clean off my little center bit here to get us started. And I'm going to use this just wet wipes as uh, something to clean my brush off in between here. So I feel like those are starting to be in better supply. So I'm going to keep that there. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with this water coloring. And I'm only using three colors, but I love how you can mix these colors to get the effect you want. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get a sip of my tea here real quick so I can keep talking. Mm. Thank you, Teresa, for sharing. I did forget to mention, if you haven't watched before, um, make sure and share this with your friends and let us know. Um, also, feel free to leave lots of comments and questions and chat with everybody. Um, someone will win a $15 gift card at the end of this live. So, Leah will be picking and announcing that <clears throat> right at the end. What is it about? As soon as I go live, I feel like my voice suddenly decides to get all dry. And <clears throat> so I'll keep trying to talk as loud as I can. All right. So first off, I'm using key line. That's for the leaves and the greenery. And then mixing a little bit of bubble gum and a little bit of clementine together. That's going to create that coral color that we have on there with the layering. So I did go ahead and in advance from this stamp set, let me show you. I went ahead and took this beautiful floral image right here. I stamped this, oh, hi from New Zealand, Julie. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Zaymar from New York. Um, so I heat embossed this in gold on watercolor cardstock. This is Arches, um, cold pressed, um, really good high quality um, watercolor cardstock. When you're only doing a little piece like this, just a hint, it's a really great way to use up your little scraps and stuff. So I use my Misty because, of course, it's watercolor paper, so there's some texture to it. So I use my Misty so I could stamp it a couple times um, with my just clear embossing ink. And then I sprinkled on my gold embossing powder and heat set that. So as you can see, I got fairly good coverage there. Um, and what's great about watercoloring on a heat embossed image it kind of makes it really easy and takes some of the guesswork out of it. So if you haven't done a lot of watercoloring, the raised edges kind of provide um, a little bit of a spot to hold the color and kind of make the blending a little bit effortless. Oh, wait, hold on. Pay attention to what I'm doing there. Let's do bubble gum there. Let me make sure I'm getting it right. So a uh, little bit of bubble gum, a little bit of clementine, more bubble gum than clementine. I'm just gonna kind of mix it together until it looks right and then a little bit of key lime. So I'm actually gonna start off here with the key lime and I'm gonna water that down because these colors are really bold and intense. If you haven't used these before, um, a little bit, I mean, look at how much I watered that down and you can see still how just bold and beautiful that color is. So the first thing I'm gonna do there is just lay a little bit of color down um, on each of those little, um, 
little leaves that we have on there. There's not a ton on this image, so it kind of makes it uh, nice and easy for me, really. I'm going to put just a little bit along there, too, just because I want to kind of add the illusion of a little more greenery. And if it gets a little too bold, just kind of soften it up with a little bit of water. And now that I have just that base layer down and the color's still a little damp, I'm just going to dab a little more of the intense um, bold color in there. And as you can kind of see on there, I think, it's going to kind of blend down naturally on its own. I don't really have to do anything to blend it down. It's just going to blend on that moisture that's already there and provide a little bit of depth to the color. All right, and just like that, that green part is done. So let's move on to making our coral color. So I'm gonna to mix together, like I said, mostly pink with just a dab of that orange on there. And you can kind of sort of see that color. And I've got a nice, I'm gonna kind of soften up and just make a really watered down bit of color here. And this is gonna provide just my base layer of color. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of take all of that, spread it around, kind of dampen that whole flower so that there's just a little bit, a little bit of color and a little bit of moisture and it's kind of just a soft base coat. I'm gonna do the same thing here on this one, same way, just kind of quickly color over the whole thing. Nothing, you don't have to stay in the lines on this one. You're just getting a first layer of color down. And then once I've got all of that, then I'm gonna quickly come back in while this is still damp and I'm gonna pick up some of that bolder color and I'm gonna start just kind of dropping it in at the base of each of those petals. And I'm just gonna let the water and that heat embossing kind of do its own magic. I don't have to really overthink this. I'm just dropping it all in on one side and letting it kind of blend out on its own. And if it looks like it's not really blending enough or it's just a little too concentrated color, I can come in and just kind of soften that up a little. All right, oops, hold on here. I feel like I lost, oh, there we go. I did lose my comments. Hold on, give me just a second here. Catch up, all of a sudden it just froze on my comments. Oh, oh, the streaming, okay, good, streaming. I thought maybe that's why I lost comments is because the streaming stopped. All right, I'm just gonna keep going here real quick and then I'll catch up on those comments I missed because. I don't want to let this dry too much and lose my my blending capabilities there. Okay, and I can see one little bit of a spot there where I've got it dried too much, but no worries. I'm gonna just grab a little tiny bit of color, soften that out a little bit, and then I can just kind of blend it out a little and not have it too bold. All right, and then now that this is dried a little bit more, I'm gonna come in. And again, it's blended out, so I'm just gonna kinda drop in a little more at the base of some of these, just to deepen that color a little bit along the top edges there. And then I can do the same up here. And you can kinda do this indefinitely, as much as you want until you're happy, but I love just to kinda let it flow on its own and do its own thing, and you get that lovely depth in everything else. Okay, so I think that's about where I'm happy. And I don't think I need to do much more than that. So let me get that up a little closer so you can see. And while you look at that, I'm going to catch up on all the comments there. Um, yes, this is gold heat embossing, Allison. This and uh, Maureen, this is Arches cold pressed watercolor paper. It's a nice, high quality, heavy weight. Um, I do notice the paper makes a difference on the quality of your finished project there. All right, let's see. Um, which brushes? Uh, let me look here. These are, this is a Winsor & Newton 111 round. I think I just got it at Michael's, just locally. So it's nothing super duper expensive. I finally just got a set and I know that brand is fairly decent. So, um, I know it's probably not anything professional, but it works good for me and I really liked it. So, all right, we are going to set this aside to dry now. I'm going to move on my watercolor stuff out of the way here so I'm not getting uh, tangled up in that. And I'm going to set this up here and let this dry for a little bit. Actually, just set it off to the side there. All right, let's move on to that heat embossing on the acetate. And yes, Julie, that's what I love about these liquid watercolors. 
the colors are so vibrant. I don't know if you saw how little I used for that and just how bold and bright and beautiful it came out. So, and when it dries, it's going to soften slightly, but just by mixing the colors too, because you have the pink and you have the orange, um, but mixing together, you, I, that's one of my favorite blends is just that coral pink color that you get by mixing those together. So totally makes me happy. All right. So for stamping on the acetate and heat embossing, I'm going to move that. I'm going to bonk my misty on it here if I leave it there. So I have a little bit, I showed earlier on that heat resistant acetate. This is what I'm using and it comes in the clear pieces and there's just kind of like a, a little bit of a backing on it. And I'm going to leave that on there while I heat emboss, partly because it gives me something to kind of grip. And it's also a little easier to see what I'm doing, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to use a misty just because I think it will allow me, um, I could probably stamp it clear, but I'm afraid I'd slide on the acetate. So the misty is going to help me keep it really firmly and sturdily in place. So I'm going to pick that up and then rearrange my acetate there. All right, and then one of the most important things I believe on this is that acetate kind of has a lot of static on it. So I'm going to use my powder tool, it's an embossing tool. It's got a leak in it right there. So I'm being pretty generous and making sure there's plenty of powder on there. I can brush it off later, but I really want to make sure that my embossing powder is only going to stick where I want it to stick. So, and I'm going to be embossing it with some gold embossing powder and I'm using just a clear watermark. Oh, that powder is going to make me sneeze. All right. And I only stamped once. I didn't have to multiple stamp on this one at all. So I'm going to just ink it up really well and then gently press that in place to make sure it's all on there. I don't know if you can see on there, perfect on the reflection. I can see that I've got a perfect image. I'm going to move this up out of the way now. That'll be the end of that for a moment. And then I'm going to carefully sprinkle on that gold embossing powder. And you'll probably be able to see pretty quickly. Ah, I don't think I got that powder tool on there enough this time. So I know I was really generous on the other day when I did it. So I'm going to grab, this is another trick you're going to want to have on hand to fix any of those little imperfections there. Let's see. I think I might just not worry about, I think my flower will cover that a little bit. So even more generous than I was there with the um, powder tool. I know I really pounced it on hard yesterday. So when I made my sample card, because I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't have any um, sticking like this. Although I did notice yesterday where my fingerprint was, I had a big old blob of the powder there. All right, I'm gonna grab my heat gun, excuse the noise for a second, and we'll quickly heat set this. And I kept the heat gun moving pretty well because even though it's heat resistant, I'm still a little scared I was gonna melt it, but as you can see there, it worked just fine. And you know what? That little bit of extra gold, it's just a little bit of extra sparkle, right? We won't worry about that. All right. Can you see that? That's going to be where our shaker elements fill in. And what I'm going to do, oh, hold on. I always get embossing powder everywhere when I heat emboss and it makes me a little crazy because then it sticks to everything. So, all right. So what we want to do now, and I did this in advance, but I'm going to show you kind of how I planned and lined this up. So I want to cut a window and this is where that shaker part's going to go. Um, so to plan out where I was going to stamp that, because I kind of planned where my sentiment was going to go. So I just kind of lined that up and then made sure there was room for my other sentiment ahead. So I ended up die cutting this right about in the middle. And then I also die cut it with um, stitched rectangles. So I use the coordinating dies and the stitch rectangle. So here's that already done and die cut. Just showing you uh, my process a little bit there, but I wanted to save some time since we were 
doing a bunch of steps. And can you see how that pops behind there? I can see I still need to trim a little bit off of the sides here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast just to make sure this doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because it just needs to fit behind there. And then I'm gonna add that in place with some good sturdy adhesive. This is gonna hold that acetate right where we want it. I know, Amy, um, I don't know if you were here at the beginning, but this is the first, this literally is the first card I've ever heat embossed on acetate, the sample that I made on there. And I've had this acetate for forever, and I still kind of can't believe that I haven't done it sooner. And I really love, love the way it looks, and I'm pretty sure I will be doing that more. All right, and I see Leah answered the question about the watercolors, so I will not worry about that. Let's add a little tiny bit of adhesive there for fun. Hi, Diane from Atlanta. All right. I know rainbows and sparkle and gold. It's just kind of hard to go wrong with that. All right. Peel off. This is score tape. I like <clears throat> good sturdy adhesive because I don't like um, worrying about anything coming apart. Especially if you're doing a shaker card, the last thing you want is for all of that to fall apart. So I'm going to carefully line this up here because once I get that adhered down, it's not moving anywhere. And I'm looking from the back just so I could make sure I lined it up. But once you turn it over and look from the front, you can see pretty quickly that that lines up perfectly in that window. So this is going to be the perfect spot to put all of our fun shaker elements. However, before I move on and do too much of that, um, I have learned this one the hard way. If you're going to stamp any images on your front, do it now before you start adding foam adhesive and layers. So let's go ahead and add our sentiment onto here. I'm gonna clean this off real quick. And then I know this is one of my favorite stamp sets from the new release. This was also the first time I really, I think I used some of the sentiments for the release hop, but I hadn't actually um, used a lot of it yet. So, okay, I'm gonna use our Misty again, just because We've come this far, I really don't want to mess it up now. So I'm going to stamp that lovely little keep going with some green ink just because, um, let's see, what tape do I use? Um, for Suzanne, is that for adhering um, the acetate behind? That was score tape. Um, score pal tape? Score tape? Um, it's just a really good sturdy adhesive tape that I love and I use quite frequently. Okay, I'm using Grassy Knoll to stamp that on. And I liked just how well that coordinated with the green and the florals. You'll see when we get to that spot putting it on. And then I used a little add-on sentiment there. I'm gonna pop that on there real quick and add that with our Detail Black ink. And that's the perfect black ink nice and juicy so I'm going to very very gently this is a very small detailed sentiment so don't smoosh it on really hard or you'll find yourself with a lot of extra ink and if you're using a misty if there's any spots that you don't like I mean that really looks beautiful but down there I'm kind of going oh, I don't mind a second stamp on there so I'm just going to very very gently again ink it up one more time and then I can press it into place there and make sure that that comes out Nice and crisp and clear. And if you haven't watched these yet, Leah always links each of these products as we use them. So if you're wondering what it is or you miss the name of it, just check in the comments and you can see um, really quickly there from her where to find these. Okay, done again with our Misty. <laughs> right, Lori? I know, there's, it's so hard to pick favorites from the new releases, I know that. So. But as soon as I saw this one, especially for this time in the world, just all the sentiments are so fun and encouraging. Let's see, Patricia, the detail black ink. I know, right? I cannot get enough of that detail black ink. And it stayed so nice and juicy for so long. All right. You know what? I think I might have enough. My foam adhesive looked like less than it actually was. So I think I might have enough here. We'll see how it goes. Um, but if I have enough here, I'm going to go ahead 
and use the crystals instead of the jewels. I think I got that right this time. All right. Oh, let's take that out of there. Made it a little bit too wide and also too wide that way. So the biggest trick with a shaker card, if you've not made them much before, is you want a tight seal all the way around where your shaker element is going to go. So in our case, that means right in here, and so then that piece isn't going to be big enough, of course, but you know what, I'm just going to use it anyway and trim off another small piece. I'm trying to, trying to stretch out this adhesive, right? And the easiest way for me that I found is just to kind of put it in there and trim it right in place. That way you're wedging it in nice and tight so you don't end up with any gaps and holes. And as I'm looking here, I totally have enough here. We're going to do two layers and we're going to fill it with crystals. So like I said, the smaller the roll gets, sometimes it deceives me and I think I'm running out more than I actually am. So let's see. You probably could do that, um, Allison, especially if you were able like to die cut. Yeah, cut with a die for the opening. I, that's, I actually just finished reading your um, comment. I imagine that that would work. Um, for me, I guess it depends on what I'm, what I'm creating. Um, sometimes it's just easier to have the foam tape all ready and on the go. And actually my fun foam collection is getting a little bit low as well, so. That probably wouldn't have helped me much today. So, all right, do the same thing again. So to make this double layer, I'm just basically repeating everything that I did the first time. And then I can quickly adhere all of those in place over that second layer. I'm gonna need to trim this one down again. Yes, Maureen, I, like I said, uh, that was, I haven't embossed until today, well, till yesterday, making my sample one um, on acetate either. So I was pretty, pretty excited with how it came out. All right. And then just to make this extra fun here, once I get this on here, let's get that little extra piece of foam. Instead of just, um, doing one color of the crystals let's go ahead and mix and match yes <laughs> very true Leah do make sure that it's heat resistant acetate or you really will be in for an unpleasant surprise so all right so I don't know as I'm looking on here my um clear crystals are getting a little bit low so let me look at let's pick a color or two to put on here the green might be kind of pretty I'm just going to kind of test because these are more clear and crystally. I think let's go with the green. I really actually like that. So I'm going to go with that. We're going to fill in the center here. Plenty of pretty shaker fillings on there. And just to help um, enable this to shake and move the best that it can, I'm going to go through and pick out some of the largest of those crystals. Um, I've actually used quite a few of them. So I don't think I have a lot in there. I'm just going to go for kind of the, there's three sizes. So I'm going to try and use mostly the small and the medium on there. And then that'll give them a little more room just to shake and move in there and be pretty. So okay, enough to move, but still enough for room for them to stick around. fuzz on there. All right, so to make this the easiest it can be, I have another little piece of acetate. So I'm going to very carefully peel all my foam adhesive off. And I kind of like to hold it in place because inevitably like that. See how I just flipped a little piece of a crystal up? I really want to try and avoid flipping those over to get stuck. And I always forget to do this. And I remember someone telling me once, um, that it was a good idea to run their powder, your powder tool around the inside of that foam tape, just to keep it from uh, attaching to anything you don't want it to. 
But what I'm going to do, which I just remembered I needed to trim that piece of acetate down a little bit. There we go. I'm going to adhere a piece of acetate right behind this window here. And this is going to seal all of those little crystals. Um, yes, there are red in that set. Um, who asked that question? Sorry, it just moved. Lana, there we go. I saw Lana's question. In. Okay, now we have that shaker element all ready to go. So I can just fill in. I already peeled off the foam tape there. I probably could have waited um, to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and add that tape real quick just to cover that spot where the acetate is, just to make sure that this will adhere well in place. The foam at the top and the bottom is going to do a fairly good job of holding it in place, but that's going to just expedite it just a little bit more. So, all right. Going to quickly peel that off. And now that I have those crystals sealed in there with that acetate, I can peel it off to put it onto my card base that I've created in advance. I kind of picked a color that would, there we go. I love the crystals in there. I think that's such a pretty sparkly effect. You see how fun and shaky they are? Okay, sorry, there's something about a shaker card that's just fun. You can't pick it up and not play with it. All right, we are almost done here. I need to add that flower on there. And all I'm gonna do to adhere that in place is a little wee bit of liquid glue. And I don't need to put a ton of it on. I'm just gonna add it to the two main areas. Um, and actually, and I just saw someone there, a see-through card base. That would actually be a really fun way to do it. it would be die cut a window in the back as well. And then you'd get the added, um, added window effect in there. All right. And using the liquid glue on there, the bonus is I can kind of wiggle it around until I really like where it's placed there. So I can adjust it to kind of fit, fit the spot I want to put it on there. Now, I think I am going to go ahead and switch over. So I have the um, crystals on the inside, but I think I'm going to go ahead um, and put it on, put the jewels on the outside, just because I think that'll be a, a good finishing touch out there. So... I already did that on the other one, so we'll just stick with the same, same theory here on this one. All right. Add a couple down there. I'm just kind of, as before, I like to use little groups of three, and I'm just copying what I did on my other card, so I'm not really overthinking this. So let's see. All right. Adhere those in place and we're winding down right to the end. So has anyone else already shopped the new release? I'm kind of curious to hear. I know someone else said that they didn't get this set, so I'm guessing that means they got some other stuff. I'm always excited to hear everyone's favorites. All right, let's see. I see a question there from Jean. So the crystals are what on, are on the inside. They're clear and they have a little more of a diamond shape. So they're great for shakers. If you do them on the front of your card, um, they're a little pokier. Um, so you need to either hand deliver or just kind of pat them. The jewels on the other hand, I'm gonna get this right. They have an iridescent finish and they're solid back and flat backed. So they kind of pick up the color of what's around them. Um, so you can see the, let me, let me pull out here. Let's do a little comparison so you can see. These are the crystals. Can you kind of see how they have um, a little bit of a sort of flat back on them, but it's more faceted and raised up. So I do sometimes put them on card fronts and just raise them up. And I probably could have done that on here and it would have looked really pretty, but, um, but they're a little more dimensional and they're clear and really sparkly. And then the jewels, you can kind of see on that the flat back and then the iridescent finish on them, so. Oh, yay, Heather. I need to get on some Mother's Day cards here really quick. It's about that time, isn't it? All right. And both of the jewels and the crystals, let me just show you that. They all, they both come in these beautiful packs, all packaged up just like this at a really great price point. So you get all of those colors all together 
at the same time. So you have a full assortment of everything you need. So jewels and crystals. I feel like I need to label these so I keep them straight. Maybe I'll do that. That might be helpful for me. <laughs> but so if I ever muddle and say it backwards, that's the, uh, the correct breakdown of what those are. All right. So this is the shaker with the jewels inside. You kind of see those in there moving. This is the shaker with the crystals inside. So there's our two options. And I see Leah has announced our winner. Congratulations to Amy Cooley. You are today's $15 gift card winner. Yay, congratulations. Fun time to go shopping. And Kelly Alpha's Julie, I don't know if you saw Leah's comment back above. Um, sign up for uh, in-stock notifications. So when they get back in stock that you'll get a notification and know. Um, but yeah, so thank you everyone for joining me today. It was sure fun to go ahead and put that together again. And I hope you will join me again on Thursday. I'll be live on the Facebook page at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, which is 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So wherever you fall in that time zone or from wherever in the world. If you can join us then, I will look forward to seeing you. In the meantime, I hope everyone has a wonderful week, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.